What's going on, dudes and dude Ed? So it looks like USC is going to have a lot of visitors over this weekend for that LSU game in Las Vegas. I'm pretty sure maybe one of them isn't their like real official visitor. I don't even think this counts as an official visit either because it's on a neutral site. So I think these players had to pay their way anyways, but I'm pretty sure any team that's trying to bring them there is kind of helping them anyway. So you'll kind of see where they're seated in the section that's probably more favored to one team or another, but that four-star local linebacker, Madden Far Emu, is going to be there. The 2026 quarterback, Ryder Lions, that 2026 defensive lineman, Joachim Stewart, who I think might be there going there for LSU because he's from that part of the country. But then also there was this 2026 four-star cornerback in RJ Sermons, who's recently said he's going to be there as well and apparently is in pretty good standing with USC and the recruiting staff so yeah maybe that's another guy they could look at later as far as that cornerback position but yeah a lot of talented people are going to be there so looking forward to seeing how that game ends up turning out especially in the favors when it comes to recruiting as well and then that Elijah Page I always thought he played enough games last year that count as his freshman year but apparently he has been named to a watch list that acknowledges the top freshman of the year so apparently he didn't play in enough games at least four games last year i kind of guess i counted it wrong but either way that's pretty cool at least they're looking at him he's already going to be the starting left tackle for usc which is a pretty big step up from where he was last year barely getting you know backup spots if possible and then you know starting that final game in the holiday bowl so yeah we'll see where he ends up but Hoping and expecting some good things from him in his near future. And then House of Victory made another signing as well. Signing that Emmanuel Pregnon of USC's offensive line. So I believe he's returning as well as some of those other guys in their second year with the NIL Collective. So congrats to all those guys. I'll make it some money. And that 2025 basketball recruit, I keep talking about Kyan Anthony, who is Carmelo Anthony's son. Looks like he did set up officially some type of visit to USC from the September 14th to the 16th. So I don't know if that's exactly an official visit or not, but at least it's a step in the right direction to try to get one of the better guys out there in next year's class. So looking forward to seeing where he ends up. And then the women's basketball team did make a hire to their staff, I believe. It was an ex-player that was there last year in India Auto. I believe her new role is the coordinator of player engagement so I don't know exactly what that entails but I'm sure she'll still be around the team and helping out and stuff whether it's recruiting or maybe doing some other stuff or when they're on the road stuff like that to help out the players but yeah I always feel like a dummy every time I see her name now and all this stuff because if you remember me how I very highlighted the fact that I was able to meet Juju Watkins live in a person and got a picture at USC spring game earlier this year and I didn't know at the time that that's who was with her. She has apparently has always been around Juju Watkins quite a bit as India Auto. So, yeah, I felt like a freaking... But yeah, either way, I always feel bad every time. I'm like, now I recognize the name and it's like, okay, now she's going to be around the program even longer. So, I felt dumb not asking her for a picture as well. But either way, I guess we all move on, right? And it looks like the Lakers are looking to target Luka Doncic once LeBron James decides to retire, I guess. Within the next year or two, Luka has the opportunity to sign like a pretty big max contract, which he most likely will sign. I don't think anybody really hasn't signed that. They just still try to force their way into a trade after like, like a year or two after signing that deal. I think that's kind of what like Anthony Davis did. He still ended up on the Lakers, his preferred choice. So... If the Lakers are Luka's preferred choice in a couple years, once LeBron finally decides to retire and not play for the Lakers, then, you know, I'll be all for it, especially if they can, you know, not have to give up as much. They're still going to have to give up quite a bit of their future draft stock, but when it comes to certain players, maybe they could get around it as well. But, yeah, either way, it's going to be a long shot no matter what. And the Lakers did hire a player, excuse me, a director of performance and health, and I believe his name was Leroy Sims, Dr. Leroy Sims. So yeah, congrats on the hire and hopefully he'll be able to keep all these guys healthy for the next couple of years. And Duke football named their team captain. I believe it looks like it's going to be Aaron Hall, Jordan Moore, Malik Murphy, and Justin Pickett. Hall and Pickett, I don't know exactly what positions they play, but 
probably on the offense and defensive lines, respectfully. So yeah, hopefully these guys are going to be good, and hopefully they'll bring them some good luck and some wins this year. And then that Senior Bowl's watch list for the Reese's Senior Bowl, I think we talked about USC quite a bit ago, but I did see that Duke did put up a couple of guys that are on that watch list. I believe it was Jacquez Moore and Jordan Moore, and then there's also another guy, I believe his name was... Ozzy Nicholas, excuse me. So I forget if I think he might be a linebacker. I could be wrong, but he has to be good enough if he's going to be invited to the Senior Bowl. So yeah, get glad that some of these guys are getting some of the recognition that they deserve from Duke. And then there were some of the recruiting prospects coming up in that 2026 class. There was that five-star Jordan Smith Jr. He has set up an unofficial visit to Duke September 28th. So that's pretty good. At least they got one of those five stars in pretty early. So hopefully they can get an official visit here at some point for him. And I spoke about this guy the other day for USC recruiting, but he's a 2025 four-star Dwayne Ariston. And he set up a Duke visit as well for September 20th through the 22nd. So yeah, visiting both my schools pretty much within the same month. So hopefully, like I always say, he ends up at least at one of them. And then the way too early softball rankings that come out, I don't know exactly where they came from, but looks like they have Duke in the top five, which is pretty cool, obviously, already since they had so much success last year. And yes, sadly, they did not go as far as I was hoping they would, but at least they had that experience under the belt, and hopefully with some of the newer transfers and you know some of the experience that the, those players that were already on the team got last season, then hopefully they'll be able to go far this playoffs. And yes, apparently there's a stat out there that in the first three years of Justin Herbert's career with the Chargers, he has scored the most points than any other quarterback has in his first three seasons, which is nice, I guess. But the other bad side to that, it's always the Chargers side, which where they've also given up the most points by any team in the quarterback's first three seasons as well. So, of course, it's a dumb stat that only a Chargers player would own, especially the quarterback. So hopefully... That can be a difference now with Jim Harbaugh at the helm. And then PFF had the highest graded rookies during the preseason for football. And the Chargers, Tremont Brash Morris, or Tremont Morris Brash, excuse me, was top three on their rankings. And even he got cut. A lot of these guys got cut that made that list of some of the highest graded guys. But they did bring back Morris onto their practice squad. So that was nice to see. At least he didn't go somewhere else. But yeah, overall a good thing i guess and then as i mentioned in the last video that there was going to be some movement with the squad and the roster because of some of the trades that ended up happening so because i did see that tony jefferson one of the safeties that they kept on the 53 man roster was released and signed to the practice squad so i wanted to see how that went down so apparently because they had traded for tyler heineke they had to release tony jefferson then they waived running back Jarrett Patterson. They signed a center, Sam Mustafer, and tight end Eric Tomlinson to the practice squad and released cornerback Robert Kennedy from the practice squad as well. So I don't know what's the difference between waiving and releasing a guy. Maybe if you release him, then you're able to sign him right away. But if you waive him, then he has to go through each team. Every team basically in the NFL has a chance to scoop him up if they want to, but you usually do that for a player that you know nobody's going to want to get because I think they have to give up like a some type of draft pick later in the future if they end up picking a guy like that, which I think they claimed Hassan Haskins yesterday as well. So I wonder how that's going to work out for their draft picks in the future or whatever compensation they have to give up. But it's going to be pretty interesting, but definitely glad they're very going for it this offseason and hopefully they'll be a little bit more aggressive and see what happens during the season. So thanks for watching people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.